Coming up in this video, I will explain how trying to get some close-up trail camera footage of my local foxes ended up with an award-winning image of a wood mouse. Welcome back again, uh, good to see you. Um, in a recent video I put out, um, things were a little quiet at the time and I thought it might be an idea rather than not put any content out to uh, maybe go through a few of my old favourite images. Um, the thing with camera trapping, you can go weeks or sometimes even months without without anything to show for it. So uh, I thought maybe if I, if I go over some old images some of my old favourite images um, and just show you a little bit of story behind the image and uh, a little bit of the background and maybe how I got the inspiration for it and you might recall last time uh, I did a little one of these um, story behind the image type things um, it was of a fox actively hunting a rat at night which I managed to capture just down here by this mossy log uh, well this time I'm going to be travelling all the way to here, literally, literally just just a few metres away from where I got the fox image. The next image I'd like to talk through with you is um, another favourite of mine, a real favourite of mine, uh, and it was literally just a few metres away away from the fox image. Um, I'll get the gear set up uh, into the position I had it at the time, and I'll I'll run you through all the settings and how I come to get the image. Right, so this is how I had the, the shot set up. I had the camera, the lens of the camera pretty much level with the branch and with the my PAR sensor just at the side of the camera housing. You can see it was just a one light setup with a flash in the background with a snoot attached to try and restrict the spread of the light, try and focus it in one, one area. Right, well, I first got the idea for this for this image. Um, it was back in May 2020. It was uh, we were in full lockdown at the time, and um, because of COVID, and uh, I'm lucky I've got this uh, patch of woodland right on my doorstep, so I didn't have to travel anywhere really to to set everything up. And I'd had my trail cameras out all the time, and uh, there was a few foxes about. And I thought it might be a nice idea to try and get a little bit of close-up footage. So I put some biscuits, dog biscuits, on the front of this, on top of this branch by here, and I set my trail camera up just the other side of the branch um, to try and get some nice close-ups of the fox to see if he'd he'd, he'd uh, jump up and take the biscuits from there. And it was uh, I did manage to get some nice nice close-up images uh, footage of the fox. And just as a little tip for those of you who've not heard of this little hack for your, for your trail camera, most trail cameras only close focus down to within a few feet. And in order to get some nice close up footage, if you blue tack the lens from an old pair of reading glasses over the front of the lens of your trail camera, you can get some really nice close up footage. And I had one or two other clips uh, that night I was getting a lot of visits from the mice as well from the wood mice and um, I thought with this branch being raised off the ground it might be a it might be a nice idea to try and get go for a silhouette see if I could try and get a silhouette image and using these these branches on either side of the frame to try to try and to, 
uh, improve the composition to make you know to frame either side of the image if I could get a mouse sat in the middle of here or that, that was the idea anyway right so in order to get this silhouette shot I was after um, I fitted I fitted my flash with a snoot to try and restrict the light. I didn't want it blasting everywhere. I just wanted to try and keep it in a controlled area um, to avoid any lens flare or reflections. And um, the one thing you have to be really careful of is that none of the light that's coming out from the flash is directly hitting the lens because otherwise you'll just end up with a load of lens flare. <clears throat> so what I've done in this instance I kept um, keep making sure the flash, uh, the out output of light from the flash is kept slightly b below the height of the branch to avoid any any light going straight into the lens. Uh, I don't want to put it down too low because if you've got the flash pointing up, all you're going to do is is uh, light the underside of the subject. And in this instance, I wanted to try and get a nice even rim light all the way around the ma uh, the mouse so uh, I had to make sure this was set to the right height uh, in order to achieve that over the course of the next couple of nights I managed to capture a couple of images of the mice that came close to what I had in mind but then finally on the third night I got exactly the shot I was after in this shot the mouse was captured in the perfect position and as there was very little colour in the image I decided to convert it to black and white. A couple of the key elements in this image which really make it work are the separation from the other elements in the image. That little gap between the mouse's tail and the small branches on the right is really important because without that gap the shot would have lost some of its impact. Also, the broken line of highlights that define the top of the fallen tree on which the mouse is sitting. If I had placed the flash just, just a fraction lower, I would, I would have lost these highlights, which are vital elements of the photo, because without them, the mouse would have looked like it was just standing in mid-air. I subsequently entered this image into the 2021 Nature TTL Wildlife Photographer of the Year competition, and was thrilled when it was awarded overall winner in the camera trap category. So there you have it, I hope you enjoyed that little look at the story behind the image. If you did, a thumbs up would be most appreciated and if you would like to see more in the future please consider hitting the subscribe button. I look forward to seeing you again soon, bye for now.